Hi, uh, my name is Kevin Young from Moonlight Mantids, and uh, today I wanted to do another Q&A. This is the first Q&A we've done in a while. Um, it's kind of hard answering the same few questions over and over again, but I got some really good ones here. Also, it is starting to get cold here in Wisconsin, where we're from, and uh, where we do a lot of our stuff. If you'll notice, the background's a little bit different. We put up a new building, and uh, we have we've been growing quite a bit, so we're expanding a bit. Um, I'll get more into that in maybe another video, but. Um, uh, I went ahead and took the liberty of just like copying, copying your questions and I'm just going to read them out loud and give you the best answer that I can give you. Um, also, we have an art contest winner, which I'm going to have Sam announce at the end of the video. So stick around for that. It'll only be just, just try, I'm going to try to make my video shorter. I think that's, um, it's going to help everybody, but uh, I'll do more videos and I'll try to make them like a little smaller because I have a bad habit of like rambling like I'm doing right now. Um. So, uh, Mo Pro Uploads from YouTube and Reptile Boy 91 asked me the same question. They said, how long do they live? Um, pray, I'm assuming you mean praying mantids. Um, it really, really depends. Uh, I have a, an African giant, um, mantis that, uh, uh, that, um, I've had for almost two years before it died. And, uh, it's, it, it really just depends. I kept a really low temperatures. One thing I do is because I sort of like sell some of my nymphs and I keep some as breeders. My breeders are in a different area from the ones that I sell. I have some nymphs that are, I'm just going to explain this a little bit. I have some nymphs that are um, from the same from the same ooth. The, some of them are L3s while others are like adults. They have wings and everything. So it really, really, really depends on the temperature. I keep my breeding stock is heated up so I can breed them and make more. While my nymphs are kept relatively cool and maybe get like a little less food and a little less this and that just so that they're, you know, they're just kind of slow. Their metabolism slow. You don't want to feed them a lot and then have them at cool temperatures because they'll rot their stomach. They're ectothermic, so you don't want to do that. Um, so it, it depends on temperature. I can't tell you how long it's going to live. And yes, um, you know, you know, you mentioned, uh, one of you mentioned that uh, it depends on the species. Um, that's true too. Um, I the from as far as I know, the giant Asians, giant Africans, the Hirudula and Siphondromantis, those are the two of the longest lived um, mantis genus that I know of. Um, basically, if you want something that's going to be a pet, go with a female. Ask for a female if you can get one. Um, usually have six segments, uh, and then you'll you'll know you're going to have a longer lived pet. But in general, I tell everybody it's it's a year. It's it's going to be a year. I don't I don't even know. Um, Depends on how you take care of it. You know what I mean? So, um, thank you for that. Tim Heller, uh, aluminum mesh cages can hurt their feet. You should rather use fiberglass or certain mesh. He wrote that on YouTube. Um, I know he's saying, he's bringing up a good point. He says aluminum mesh can hurt their feet. He means like the little, uh, little, um, ends of their feet can get broken off. And then after a while they can't really climb because the aluminum, and it's because it can get pinched off in the, the wire sort of cages, just like they can get stuck on the, on the, on the mesh, um, like the thinner, like the tool and stuff like that. Um, if you can get a, uh, a, a softer sort of material sort of mesh, that's better for their feet, yes. Sometimes you can have problems using aluminum, but truthfully, I've kept some mantis like violence in aluminum their whole life, and it's never caused a problem. So, I mean, it's, it's trial, some people have really bad luck, and some people don't. You know, uh, I wouldn't change all your caging just for the sake of the mantis. You got a bunch of aluminum cages. Put your mantids in them. I'm sure they're going to be fine. They can hurt their feet. I haven't had some that have lost so much of their grip from the aluminum mesh that they couldn't walk anymore. I've never even seen that. I, I can't even really note or record any real serious, like, you know, um, climbing problems from any of that stuff. So, I mean, it, it just it just depends. It's all preference, more or less. Uh, mesh is, is good for when you want good sheds, and that's more important. The next thing you're going to worry about in mesh cages at all is humidity. So, misting them once in a while. Otherwise, you know, you're not going to have a mantis live too long if it's in a dry cage. with I mean, lots of ventilation is good, prevents mold, keeps them healthy, and prevents black death. But at the same time, you know, you want to worry about humidity now. So when it comes to material, yes, you want your cloth sort of mesh is a lot better than your aluminum. There are some issues a lot of hobbyists have had with um, the aluminum, but I, I haven't seen anything too, too, um, you know, uh, too concerning. So if you have it, use it. You know, you don't need to go out and change everything because it's going to guarantee hurt your mantis. It can happen, though. So just be aware of that. Um, 
just it's just good advice though if you can, if you can pick um, so uh, Shane Ellis Chancellor said uh, hey I have a baby one I found it's missing its back leg um, will it ever grow back and um, what can I give it um, to help it uh, as it as I can't buy any food whoa okay you have a mantis but you can't feed it um, you can order stuff from uh, flukers like you go online and order your own feeders and stuff mealworms crickets um, preferably not that many crickets uh, dubias you can order pretty readily red runners is another good roach you can feed just for that but uh, will, it let, will its leg grow back if it can shed successfully one or two more times especially if it's an L2 or an L3 its leg will come back I have seen it where I've paid quite a bit of attention to something like uh, uh, a joker mantis or something something kind of important that I really cared about and maybe it came with like a messed up leg or had a funny shed you really really take care of it their legs will come back in a shed or two um, depending on how young it is if it's older you know it's, it's a little bit rougher it's harder but at the same time as an uh, as an adult if they lose a limb well if they're still able to eat their food they'll be fine you know they're just, just going to be a little bit handicapped um, but it's not necessarily life threatening for an adult as it is for a nymph because they need to be able to hold on in order to get through those sheds. They get through a couple sheds, their limbs do grow back. And, um, you you know, online feeders are uh, becoming more readily available thanks to the reptile trade, which is helping the insect trade. So go ahead and um, I would order some food. You can have even, like, repetitive orders come in if you have, like, a lot of feeders and stuff. But uh, red runners are a really great roach. Dubious, too. Um, just saying, uh, seems like you're having a problem with uh, finding where to find food. Just hop online and I would say... Uh, Definitely, um, you can you can have some shipped pretty much anywhere. Um, it says Daniel PC Hacken uh, from YouTube. I, I don't really know what your name. It's it's yeah, just you guys with your names on YouTube. It's crazy. Um, you said I have a question for you. If a praying mantis gets sick with black death, is there any way to nurse him her back to health? Yes. Um, I found that black death isn't the isn't the beginning to an end. You know what I mean. It basically means, yeah, I think you need more ventilation, um, you need, but at the same time, you, they need to drink more. I think it's a dehydration issue, it's like getting the runs, I think, so um, overall, and it also could be a temperature issue, so like I said earlier, if they're not warm enough and the food they're eating is sitting in their stomach too long, that causes gut rot, um, dehydration causes gut rot, and I think that's what Black Death is, so lots of fluids, maybe slightly warmer temps, better ventilation, um, you know, uh, definitely back off on crickets because some people say that there's a direct, like, um, problem when it comes to feeding crickets and, um, and, uh, the black death and stuff. And I'm not sure why that is, but, um, them both being orthoptrids, I'm guessing maybe there's, there it could even be just some disease that they share and we're not even really sure about. Um, so another thing too, very popular and it does actually work. Uh, put a little bit of honey at the end of a toothpick and feed it to your mantis. It has uh, natural like antibiotics or probiotics or whatever um, and antioxidants and stuff. So you give them some of that as like a treat or even if you want to kind of put some honey on the food items that you're going to be feeding the mantis and they'll ingest that anyway if you can get them to eat. Get them to drink a lot. Make sure they're ventilated. No mold. It could be a mold thing. We're not really sure what causes it. Insect diseases. I mean it's, it's, it's crazy that we can even help them, an animal at all but yes lots of water, lot, lots of honey maybe increase the temp um, or increase ventilation depending on what what your setup is you know we're not really sure exactly what causes it but there's a cure water honey you know make sure your temps are right if, if you can if it's a sensitive species you know um, also make sure there's good ventilation so it can it can you know dry out if it needs to um, cause I notice sometimes it's too moist and that can cause it too um, so a good question yep you can definitely handle black death it's not the end of the world um, Jeremy uh, McLeod uh, from YouTube says, uh, what does L4 and that stuff mean? So, okay, I'm going to go over this, and this is with all insects, arachnids, and, and things like that. So, an L4, L stands for larval, okay? So, if it's larval 4, means it's the fourth stage in its, a, as a larva. So, when um, a praying mantis hatches out of an ooth, it becomes an L1. It was at 0, now it's an L1. It sheds for the first time, it becomes an L2. Because when it hatches, it comes down off this little thread... And it's called the worm skin. They come out of this worm skin and then their legs come out. That's its first shed. So it's an L1. Sheds and then becomes an L2. And that's usually when it's safe to ship mantids. Just saying. Um, and you can, and they become a bit hardier. The bigger mantises, the better they do with like shipping, feeding, all that other stuff. But um, So then it sheds again, becomes an L3. 
Um, females go through uh, eight sheds, and males go through about six. So, and it's funny because if you count their segments, it's backwards. They go through eight sheds, but have six segments for female. Males go through six sheds, but have eight segments. Um, which is kind of interesting because uh, it's it's. I'll get more into that uh, maybe in another video. Um, but that has to do with preventing um, members uh, from the same move from breeding. Is that the males will mature faster in two less sheds, fly off and and mate females from other ooths versus the same one just for just just um, to help so they just prevent them from inbreeding. You can still do it, and with a lot of species, it's really tricky because the males live like two weeks. So you keep your males cooler like I do, like you know you keep them cooler and you and you heat up your females and then you can breed the ones from the same ooth. But it's a matter of matching them up by having the temperatures correct. Um, so that can be kind of tricky. Which is actually another question on here. It says, is it possible to uh, breed mantids from the same ooth? And that was. Um, Olafur009 from YouTube asked that. Um, it is possible, like I just said. Um, cool, them cool, uh, cool down your males and heat up your females, and then they'll meet right there. The reason that nature doesn't want you to do that is to prevent inbreeding. Um, so naturally, members from the same ooth would never naturally meet because your males would have gotten old and died weeks before their females became mature. So that's kind of how they prevent that. But can you do it? Yes. How long can you do it? Well, the first thing inbreeding affects, and this is with anything, is fertility. So because you're, you're matching up brother-sister kind of, you know, from the same ooth, it affects genetics, which means you're matching up not only, you know, traits you might want, but you're also, you know, um, certain genetic dispositions will hook up. And over time, the more you inbreed, what you can, the more you inbreed, though, you're going to notice your die-offs are going to go up. So... You might have a hatch of 300 and you might get, say, if you're like me and you do like hundreds or you just want a few dozen. But if you're like me and say, I try to keep them all alive and because I, I, I have kind of a purpose with most of them. So I'll try to keep them all alive. But say, if, they're, if they got really good bloodlines, I'll hatch 300. Let's say 200 survive to L2. All right. And by the time they're L3, I got 100, 150 or whatever. And it just you just kind of you lose some along the way because some are just genetically, you know, um, de deficient. Like they just... They just aren't meant to survive. You know, they don't have everything it needs. They're not survivors. So what happens after I breed this generation again, and uh, the next time I get ooth from breeding brother sister, what will happen instead of like 200 or 150 going to L2, I might have 125. You know, you just start seeing a loss in fertility as you inbreed. So it's important to yearly, bi-yearly, uh, depending on your breeding, try, just try to find other sources of the same species. Um, make sure they're the same species, you know, keep that information when you have your mantids. And just try whenever you can, you know, what you want to maybe inbreed, you can inbreed once, outbreed, inbreed, outbreed, inbreed, and that can, that can work out pretty well. Um, and that's just to make sure your fertility stays up, and that's all I've really noticed when it comes to the inbreeding. Some people swear by it and say, oh, no, it's insects, it's different, it, it's not going to hurt anything. It, it, it does. It does. Um, inbreeding affects everything. You know, you in nature, the males develop first for a reason. It's so they can prevent inbreeding. Well, we're able to take one ooth and breed it into each into themselves a few times. I know a breeder from years ago in California that had quite a few orchids, and he was the only one for a while that had orchids. Well, over time, I mean, he, I'd get an orchid from him um, way, way in the beginning, and uh, he, I'd raise it, and it, it did fairly well. I, maybe I didn't get it to adult or whatever, or I was trying to trying to work with it some, but uh, I get a few, um, and and it just seemed the the you know after a couple years of kind of ordering the the, the the orchids just lost a lot of their virility. They just weren't real healthy animals, and I that I know for a fact that he wasn't bringing in other bloodlines. He didn't really believe in it. Well, you could clearly see that the animals just started losing sort of their their um their um everything they need to survive, you know what I mean? So you want clean genetics whenever you can introduce them. It's just the best thing to do. Um, and it's because that normally you don't have to do that. And don't be too concerned if you inbreed two or three times. Just try to get some new blood in there if you can. You might lose some fertility, but it's not a huge issue. Um, then, um, okay, so, you know, L4, um, all that stuff, uh, Jeremy and... Uh, um, when You'll know a mantis is an adult when it gets its wings, um, unless it's like a... a Budwing or something like that, um, which you should know about. Uh, let's see here. Sniper Cube. Can I feed mantis nymphs baby dubias? Uh, yeah. Mantids are, and I'll say it again, low-impact animals 
that are opportunistic, which means that they will eat whatever they can catch. So if you have an L1, it's probably only going to be able to catch like fruit flies or maybe like springtails or maybe like tiny isopods, which just fruit flies are way easier. Um, if you have something like an L3, L4, L5, you can do baby, baby like roaches, baby crickets, you know, maybe some, some small house flies, things like that. Um, if you have, you know, more adult mantis, the bigger they are, if it can catch it, it can eat it. So you got a little mantis, give it a very little dubious, you know, whatever it can tackle. If you see them overpower that item, then that's what they can eat. That's what they eat. They can eat whatever they can catch. And as many of you have seen from the other YouTube videos, there are some crazy videos out there like mantids eating hummingbirds and, and mice and stuff like that. It, it, that is real. That it can happen. If they can overpower it, they can eat it. And that's what they can eat. Okay? So don't be too concerned. Oh, I fed it this weird beetle thing. I, no, it's not going to hurt it. I fed it a spider. I, feed, I throw spiders into my mantis cages all the time. They, they love them. Um, bees, things like that. Um, not bees, like wasps and stuff. And... Um, just whatever can overpower, and they do a pretty good job, you know, it's, I don't do like bug cage matches with like the mantis and the scorpion or tarantula or anything like that, but what, if they can overpower, they can eat it. So can eat dubious? Yeah, can eat dubious. Um, nymph dubious especially. Uh, Casey, uh, Buchanan, um, from YouTube, how long does it take for a nuke to hatch? That was a great, great question. No one's ever, I don't think anyone's really asked me that. They just, they, you know, they just, they're kind of patient. So I heard some people say things like four to six months. Um, it really depends on the species, and then it also depends, like everything else, on the temperature. So you have a mantis ooth, say it's a giant Asian, giant African ooth. Um, it's going to hatch in like six to eight to ten to twelve weeks. <laughs> Literally, that's exactly it. It can hatch in just, in just four, four to eight weeks. It can hatch in ten to twelve weeks. I don't throw my ooth out until about like... 15 weeks okay so it can take a little while depending on what it is too if you have a u.s species it's just not hatching it's some stag momentous maybe you need to put it through a diapause which means putting it in the freezer or not the freezer the fridge don't put it in the freezer you, sh you might kill it put it in the fridge for like two months pull it out give it another eight weeks that may trigger the hatch because that's what happens naturally so it depends on the species some mantis i've had have hatched in three weeks three weeks after breeding laid the egg Good, warm, moist conditions, as, as good as I can do it, three weeks later. Uh, that's with, um, griffins take like four or five weeks. Uh, some giant African species I've had or giant Asian species I've had, like five weeks exactly, five or six weeks exactly. Sometimes a little longer, depends on the temperature, depends on the humidity. A lot of times what uh, ruins, um, what, what will cause people to not have their ooth hatch Either they made it too hot with some weird heating element, which you really don't need other than like room temperatures, but they let it dry out. Don't let your ooth dry out, all right? As long as you take good care of them just every day, look at your ooth, give them a good, not, don't mist on them directly, but make sure whatever substrate you have at the bottom of your hatching cup or container you have, just some, there's some humidity element you're making sure stays moist. Um, not too wet to when the nymph hatch out that they drowned in the little droplets or anything, but keep the medium, like the sponge or the paper towel wet. Don't make all, all the way wet all the way around, and when they hatch out, they'll all drown. It'll be this horrible, nasty mess, and you'll be really upset you killed all your bugs. And it, it happens to me sometimes if it gets a little too humid in there, but just before it hatches, and there's all these droplets, and they hatch out and they drown, and I just feel horrible. I'm sitting there with like a with a paintbrush, which is a good way to handle nymphs, by the way, and just trying to like separate them, like you know, get them dry, and just try to do whatever I can if it's like a rare species. But you know, um, how long does it take to hatch? It depends on your care. A period on your care. You can look up some basic info. Know that if you if it's not a species that's used to an overwintering type period, that it can be just weeks away. And also, I like to take whatever number I expect. So like for giant African, giant Asian, instead of five weeks, I would know by 10 weeks, say like, I double that number and say, is it gonna hatch now, is it not gonna hatch now? You know, I'll start saying, okay, it might be, might be bad. The only real way to tell is to cut the youth um, to see if, it, if it's okay. A lot of times you'll notice if it was too humid, it'd be moldy inside, otherwise it'd be totally dried out and rock hard. Uh, I don't say like squeeze your youth, but I've done that with really old youth, and if it feels hard like a rock, it's probably dead. If it just gives a little bit, which probably isn't really good for the nymphs. If it just gives a little bit, it's probably okay still. You know what I mean? Otherwise, it could be real gooey inside and, like, getting rotten. And I've seen a lot of the inside of a lot of ooth from a lot of different species. Just don't let it dry out. 
Um, another good way to tell is with a lot of species, more than a few, the ooth will actually get darker just before it hatches, like with ghost ooth and, and all that, and, and uh, giant Africans, Asians, and Chinese, their ooth will get mu a little bit darker just before they hatch. So that's a good indication that you're about a week away. Then look for your scouts. You're going to hatch a couple, and you're going to think, oh my god, this is my first ooth, and I hatched like three. No, no, no. You might get, they're called scouts. I don't know why they're called scouts, they just are. Um, it's it's the sign that the rest are coming out. Those are just like your, your the early birds and stuff, and so those will hatch out, and that's how you know you got like two or three hundred more if they're like Chinese or something like a bigger, a, you know, like a griffin or something like that, which will hatch like two fifty. You know, um, giant Asians, giant Africans, you might get like three hundred, two fifty, two hundred um, easily, especially in the first ooth, which at, you know over time they they start to lose their. Um, fertility and you get less and less hatch from each one and it depends on the size of the youth too but the first one's usually the very best um but um how long it take to hatch just you know you're gonna have to you know just take good care of it and it will hatch in no time at all for most species um you look for darkening you know all that stuff i think that's the last of my questions that i saw there's gonna be a lot more leave them on my youtube page although i send them to me in a message and i'm gonna do a lot more videos uh, I would like to give you a quick explanation since this is the first video I've done in a little while. Um, I, and this is getting a little bit personal, but uh, it's been pretty busy here in my life. And uh, it's not that I've stopped doing mantids or I've stopped paying attention or, or all this crazy stuff that's been going on. Um, I, uh, I found out in March that I was having a kid, um, me and my wife. We're expecting our first child, and uh, she actually just gave birth about a week ago, <laughs> and um, so we're I'm kind of on a we're on like maternity leave, and we're spending a lot of time with baby Eleanor, and I mean it's getting a little bit personal. That's why I haven't made the videos, but um, so preparing for this kid, um, I built this building right here that we're in right now, and by the way, the reason I'm in like coveralls is because we're in Wisconsin, and it's. November, so it, we have like a foot of snow already. It's freezing out there, and it's warm in here. It's pretty nice in here. So, and it's it's we're still building, you know, we're still doing stuff to it, but it's nice and warm in here, and it's good for insects, which was you know it's hard to do in Wisconsin. But um, just on a personal note, sorry I've been so busy. Sorry the videos haven't been flowing like you'd expect them to, um, and they will pick up. I'm gonna have like two or three uploaded with this video here. Um, keep sending me questions. Uh, also, hold on a minute, and we're going to do an art contest. Um, we're, um, I'm going to have my um, my employee do a uh, pick pick a winner. She goes through all the art contests, which we're still doing, and uh, a lucky winner is going to get a Mantis Mantis kit mailed to them very soon. Um, so just keep the art coming, um, and thank you very much. We'll talk to you later. Bye! Hi, I'm Sam Smith from... Moonlight Mantids, and I'm here to pick a winner! Yay! <laughs> As you guys know, every month we have a contest to pick who will be the winner of the month. And if you win, you get a mantis and a mantis kit. Today's, today's winner, <laughs> this month's winner, is Laura Haynes from Gaston, South Carolina. Thank you so much, Laura. This is the best. I love it. I love the glitter pens. Uh, I love everything about it. I also loved your story about the mantis that rejected you in your windowsill. That was the best. Made my day. Um, the art contest is still going on. If you want a chance to win, you need to send us something. You can't get something unless it's sent. All right. Yeah. Oh, just give me a couple weeks for shipping and I'll have it out to you. Don't worry about the charges or anything. I'll pay for shipping. Just keep sending your art in and um, we'll see you guys later. Bye.